agony gout sufferers go through. The campaign hammers the point. When in gout, consult a rheumatologist. Now, only 523 people watching a stream that was uh, not announced ahead of time. Oh yeah, my fan base is just withering up. How many watch your stream, motherfucker? Only 523 people watching. 523 people. I interviewed on the first four She's awake because she has to start making dinner. Give me a second, I'll be right back. I'm actually doing something that some people have asked for, probably just joking around, but I find myself doing it. Uh, two frying pans, I have them both on the stove right now at just above medium strength temperature. Uh, obviously, you must put on your fan on the top of your stove whenever you're frying anything. Don't turn that off because I learned the hard way. As soon as I moved in here, all the alarms went off, all the fire alarms, and it wasn't too pretty. Oh boy, it looks like it's a it's another day of gout streaming. Uh, this sh this should be fun. Right now, Phil is playing WWE 2K16, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to double check that. I know he's doing his uh, his big master streams right now. Which, if you caught it a couple days ago, he talked about uh, uh, Wombat Sue or whatever the fuck her name is, uh, getting a job. And then, immediately after saying that, he goes into explaining why it is uh, he's doing long streams. Because, essentially because she's working, he, can't, he doesn't have somebody to cook for him. So, because he's so inept, and so fucking terrible at doing basic things, he decided he's going to give back to the fans. Uh, and he's going to stream for four or five hours straight. So isn't that, isn't that a treat? Aren't you happy that he's doing that? Because his girlfriend isn't there to cook for him. I, I watched some of his cooking videos. Not impressed. Not impressed. Uh, it's basically how much fat can he fry up and shove down his gullet. And then he, later on he complains, why do I have gout? I don't know, Phil. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that you're consuming nothing but pure fructose. Just soda after soda while downing red meat by the barrel. Maybe that's why. Maybe those cooking videos might be the first clue as to what's going on. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I've only, I've only recently started investigating the terrible affliction known as gout. But uh, well, one day, we shall overcome. And that disease will be wiped from the face of the earth. So uh, we're going to put up Phil's wrestling videos, because I want to watch him wrestle. Don't you want to watch him wrestle? Won't that be fun and entertaining and worth the, uh, worth the Patreon dollars? I'm still amazed that his... Uh, you know, we'll look at that later, the Patreon tiers that he has as rewards for giving him money. I'm sure they're... I'm sure they're completely reasonable. So let me pull up the video here, and uh, we'll be amazed at Phil's awesome wrestling abilities. How the hell do you get the ability to steal the finisher? I don't have that. Is it here, maybe? Move Thief, here it is. Oh, here we go. All right, I did it. And I want to get Move Thief. Humiliate your opponent by using their own finisher against them. Move Thief disrupts your opponent's focus, causing them to lose stamina. It can be performed one time during the match. Hold L1 and press... Ch okay. There, I got it. Cool. Maybe I want another one. I think Can't we're good audio level-wise. Hopefully we are. Let's see. What are the other ones? Hold on. 
I love how he tells his audience, hold on, like they're going to go yeah. somewhere. They're, they're watching his saying... inept ass navigate through this shit. Oh, hold on, wait a second. Don't rush me. No. Was uh, online wrestling. By 10%. Huh. Chad, can you explain to me, does he do this shit when he plays other games? Does he actually make you sit and watch him read through menus? And he doesn't even really read through them, does he? Like, isn't that a major criticism of Phil, is that he doesn't read the fucking instruction manuals? Or the information contained in anything? Uh, those Dark Souls and Demon Souls streams, where he got confused as to what to do and what items did and how to use shit, because he doesn't fucking do anything, he doesn't ever investigate? But it'll make you sit there for 20 minutes. L look at this boring fucking shit. Like, hold on, wait a second. I've gotta, I've gotta read through my wrestling moves. How about you pin people and you throw them around the ring, you fucking retard? Maybe that's all you need to really know about this particular game, Phil. Alright, so here we go again. A rematch against the Big Show on SmackDown. This time I have to try to steal his move, which is the new ability that I unlocked. So this could be interesting, if it works. We'll see. Knowing that you're the one doing it, it won't work. To? This is like a bootleg, uh... This sounds like a bootleg fucking rock song that I played on Rock Band years ago. It does. It sounds just like it. I'm not gonna kick my hand. This looks like a water painting compared to this. Like, nice, crisp portrait. And it looks like somebody smeared this with fucking Vaseline. Maybe he's sweating that out. Maybe that's a side effect of gout that I'm unaware of. Nobody gonna take my hand because it turns into the ground. Oh, God. Big show. Uh oh, looks like oh, I go outside. Look. Outside <laughs> the ring. Oh, man. Look at him. Is this a wrestling game or are we watching Phil's sexual fantasies play out for everyone? Show. I love you. Based on the oh, look. Signature move. <laughs> wow. Right Immediately into the signature move. When you get wow. The ring is survival. The match becomes almost secondary when Watch you get all these Watch dangerous this. objects. Three. They say imitate. Oh my! Son I did it! Knockout punch! Finishing move. That was a knockout yeah, punch. I stole it. That? What the hell? I stole his freaking finisher. Wow! I'm just gonna say right off the bat, watching people play wrestling games is fucking boring. Uh, really fucking boring. But it could be bearable if somebody was doing commentary that wasn't god awful, and his commentary is, oh, "Look, I stole it." Yeah, that's that's really that's groundbreaking shit, Phil. That's that's hardcore parkour wrestling commentary from Phil. I, I know I've muted it. Maybe you want to hear his angelic voice as he sings a fucking song for the 19th game in a row. But uh, for me to be able to stand this, I'm gonna have to periodically mute Phil and just we should play a guessing game. What is Phil saying now? What dumb shit do you think Phil is saying at this very online lag? I guarantee you. Online, I'm pushing buttons. Come on. This wouldn't happen if I were playing people in real life. What is this? That's my guess as to what he's saying right now. And who who creates a... You know, when I play video games and they've got a character creation mode, I usually make something that's fucking retarded or ridiculous, or I base it off a character in another franchise or a comic book, a movie, a video game, whatever. Phil might be the only person I know that actually makes avatars of himself. Talk about the fucking narcissism and egotism. He makes himself in video games. That's that's how full of himself that he is. This could be the fastest match ever, dude. So hard to stop that kind of strength. This could be the fastest match I've ever done in the game. Because he's done. Look, he's done. Charge finisher. He's, he's done. In position, ready to strike. Hang on. Got him. Oh my god. Boom! I see people in the chat saying, uh, which wrestling game is better? You're all fucking wrong, because I don't see anybody bringing up WCW versus NWO on the N64. So, you you all have terrible shit taste for not, re you know, re remembering that specific game. Oh, it looks like Phil's done with his match. Two minutes long, wow, he, he, he wrestles like he fucks, it's over in an instant. Good God! What a match! Oh, what He's gotta be embarrassed. Uh, para hacks? I do that. You should feel ashamed. You should feel ashamed for putting yourself in a video game. What are you? What are you doing? 
That was an incredible match. An incredible match and a <laughs> big, big victory. Ending That's the career of the big show. Right yes. So now I got finisher stealer. That'll be cool. I'll try to use that during matches from now on. Damn, that was like not even five minutes. Holy Please shit. Please join me in welcoming my guest tonight. Oh my god, here we go again. God, look how creepy that bitch looks. What's with the animations in this game? Holy fucking shit. It's like, it's like somebody took uh, sculpted plastic and put a fucking uh, metal exoskeleton inside of it to try to make it mimic humans and it couldn't quite get it down. You can see Vince is really spending the big bucks on these wrestling games. I've heard this already. Skip it. We've already heard your interview. Skip it. It was the same exact interview from before. Why did they do the same one? <laughs> Why did they do the identical interview? Forget that. Roman Reigns. He's the hero no one wants. Hey, explain this to me. Maybe maybe I've been, I don't know, spoiled or pampered by watching decent uh, Let's Plays back in the day. But if you're going to do a walkthrough, if you're going to do a playthrough of a game, and he's been playing this I don't know how many fucking hours. I'm guessing he started yesterday. So, like six or seven hours of fucking wrestling. At the very least. At the very least. So we don't have dead moments of silence while he's shitting up this game with his inability to play. He could be talking about anything, right? The history of wrestling. He could be making fucking jokes about Vince McMahon. He could be talking about WCW and uh, WWF. He could he could talk about anything, but he never does that, does he? We saw that with the Star Wars games, too. He's playing a fucking game based on the Star Wars franchise, and he never talks about anything related to it. He doesn't even talk about the game itself. It's just him snorting and coughing and belching and farting. Yelling at Panda Lee or Wombat Sue, or whatever the fuck her name is, to either make more soap or cook him dinner. And then him getting angry at video games. On, oh my god, look at this! Online, like, that shit. That's, that's, his, uh, that's every video Phil has ever done, right? Every single fucking video he's ever done, chat? I'm guessing that's what it is? I mean, how fucking sad is it that you have to come watch a stream of a stream to even be able to fucking comment on what he's doing? What a sheltered life Phil lives. He's so afraid that people are going to say something he doesn't like. Spoonie does that, too. Spoonie has moderation up the ass. You can't, you can't say what you want on a Spoonie stream, or he will ban you instantly. Phil, does, Phil takes it a step further. You're, you're not even getting to the chat. There is no chat. You've got to go to his fucking IRC or whatever gay shit he's got routed through his website. Just shameful. Say, all right, forget this. The officers don't even care. All right. And this star match are better. This match has started. This is a classic. Two guys battling it out one on one. Wait, remember? Am I missing something? Is he wrestling the same fucking match again? Big Show in real life, of course. You guys have never seen my real strength. Your never real strength. My true strengths huh. ever yet. <laughs> Here we go. Both of these competitors have so. Yeah, like Spider Man was bitten by a spider. So what? Phil got his strength from gout. His uh, his uh, joints get so inflamed they grow supersized. Is that is that his superpower? He must have a really big uh, big joint in his ass then, if that's the superpower he has. Sweat has been broken. Not too many people can drop the big show like that. Nope, only me with the splash of legends. That can turn oh, I got him. The entire I got him with a shoulder yeah, tackle of some sort. Here on out. I don't know how I did that. Work the arm. Oh. Okay, they're clapping. Respectful claps. One of Big Show's most highly contested battles came in the form of Boom. Contest. The world's strongest man, Mark Henry, collided with the world's largest athlete, and it was like two runaway trains smacking into one another. Nice, oh, worth the leg. When the Big Show and Mark Henry are in the same ring, all I can. See now, what we could do, because this is going to be wrestling, and watching wrestling is going to get boring quick, we could go watch his attempt at beating a boss in the DLC of Bloodborne. From what I understand, it took him, or it, I, I think he quit outright, didn't he? But he, he's gone through, fuck, I don't know, what is it, 10 videos trying to beat one boss? And at one point, from what I'm told, he actually starts crying. He cries because he can't beat the boss. That might be entertaining. But I don't know, chat, you're the ones in control of this. Do you want to watch Dark Side Phil fucking fail repeatedly for 10 videos? at beating one boss in Bloodborne DLC? Or should we watch this? What, uh, what do you think? I'll give you a second to answer. There's a bit of a delay 
on the stream. Pay-per-view, Henry executed a superplex, and the impact of both men hitting the mat caused the ring to totally collapse. Yeah, that was legit and not staged at all. Man! Sure it was. Camel clutch lock. I see people in chat saying three hours. Three hours that he tried to beat that boss and he wasn't able to beat it. It seems people are unanimous. They want to watch Dark Side Phil get his shit smacked around like a Tijuana crack whore. All right, let's uh, let's pull that bad boy up. Or bad boys. The plural. There's a plural in there. Because, Phil, look at the amount of videos this faggot puts out. Just look, take it in. Just drink it in. You thought Mundane Matt put up videos every other day? He's got nothing on Phil. Just nonstop videos. Who who watches these? It, it just, nothing but videos. All right, let's see. Major schedule change. I think, is this the one where he talks? He cries about Bloodborne? I'm guessing that's the one. Let's see if we can find the exact part where everything went to shit. The, the, the order, I don't understand even what the fuck I'm... He's, <laughs> he uploads them so quickly, YouTube can't even put them in the right order. He's spamming videos that hard. So, all right, where the fuck is it? No. Cathedral Ward, Vicar Amelia. Uh, is that the boss I'm looking for? Is this it? Uh, Bloodstarved Beast. Ah, uh, here we go. Ludwig. That's what we're looking for. Here we go, Chad. Look at the ratings. Look at that. I'll give you one too, buddy. I like how Phil gravitates to the wall every time he fights a boss. You know, I have not fought. I'll put that there for a second. Abritus 2.1. Use <laughs> somebody doing a callback to an earlier video. Use the lightning spears. Because if you've ever watched him play, I think it was Dark Souls 2, was it? He fucking, that, that was his whole strategy, was I'm just going to, I'm going to use the cheapest tactic I can. And then they patched it. So I don't know how he'd do after that, but don't be a little bitch, Phil. Take your beating like a man. Apparently this person's never watched a Phil video because that's not going to happen. There's that giant, oh wait, there's another path this way. Oh shit, okay. Yeah, let's go this way. Before we go down, let's go up. Blood vial. Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta back this up a second. Did you hear that? This is what I'm talking about. Just listen to listen to him when he says blood vial. He fucking burps it out. Go this way. This pig burps it out. That's all he does. We'll fart go down. and belch. Let's go up. Blood vial. <laughs> blood vial. You gout infested fat fuck. Jesus, belch off camera if you've got to fucking burp every five seconds. This is a new area. Well, yeah, it is. Someone's playing a drum. Look at this guy. Oh, that's him. Poor guy. Look at him. Let me in. Why do you want to go in there? The giant's gonna shoot you in the face. You don't want to go in there, buddy. Alright, let's go this way. Oh, shit! Oh, oh shit! Slow-moving enemies. Oh, no. Whatever are you gonna do with those Dude, weak, Ravens, slow enemies? I hate those things. They're so annoying because they're really not that dangerous. They're just loud as fuck. Listen to this pussy. He's acting oh, like they're fucking they're cliff racers from Morrowind. You you could jog circles around them. They're, they're no danger whatsoever. The fuck is making that noise? Oh, God, this is his PewDiePie attempt at being spooked, isn't it? I'm so scared, guys. Oh, God, I better go really slow and careful. Oh, boy. You fucking son of a bitch, look at this! Who's this? Who the fuck is this? Where do you come from? This was a regular enemy in the normal game. How are you surprised by this? You played the, the fucking normal game. You streamed it. Got something for you. What a dumb hag. She fucking came up and slit my fucking throat. She was hiding in the wall or something. I didn't see her. You fucking bitch. Where are we? 
I like the look of the game. This looks pretty badass, man. All the corpses piled up. You've got all this blood everywhere. This looks really good. It's got a it's got a different feel. It's a little more visceral than the core game. Yeah. Uh, DLC looks impressive. Oh no, this looks like a boss room. Oh, this is definitely a boss room. There's no way this isn't. Look at it. This is 100% a fucking boss fight here, dude. I wasn't expecting this. All right, fuck. Okay. Okay, Detective Phil. Here. Thanks for solving the mystery. Well, oh, a boss okay. room. You don't say. The giant open and closed area. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it might be a boss room. Wow. He really solves the mysteries. Yep. We can't. The fail count in the upper right-hand corner, is that counting his and uh, Pandalee's life? Is that why it's at two? Because they're losers? Failures? Oh my god, look at that in the background. Oh my god! It's a I, I can't wait for it either. Somebody in the chat said uh, they're waiting for This Is How You Don't Play Bloodborne DLC. It's going to be fucking great. Ludwig! Yeah, cursed is right. That is fucking ugly. It's half dog, half man, but it's a mutant monster. Oh my god. <laughs> how quickly do you think oh, he'll boy. die? Let's take bets. How quick? I'm gonna guess oh, under okay. a minute. Good under start. a minute, he's gonna be dead. What is the time code? 425. So let's see. Ah, come on! I, I'm dodging here. I'm using health okay. items in front of his attacks. Come, come on! I'm running away. On these are bugged leg mechanics. C come on! Look at that! He hit me. Come, come on! Can't even move. Shit, I was wrong. He lived, he lived past my guess. Oh? I can't dodge. I haven't even swung yet. Fuck this. Wow, I did no damage. So he lived for a minute and 25 seconds. A minute 30 seconds. That was his life. Wow. I like the strategy of so running away and using reached, blood vials. And he's insanely fast. Basically, he's just a huge area of effect spinning in front of him like this, and your dodges don't work. So, nice boss. He's already that bitching. He's already bitching about boss, game mechanics. Really. Come, come on, what is this? Job making an original boss. That's a lot of fun. Oh, what? no, actually. That was terrible. What a whiny cunt. We watched the same video. Chat, you saw this video. His whole strategy was standing in front of the boss while it attacks him, and then running away from it, using a blood file, and then wondering why he gets hit. And he's bitching about that. He actually bitched about the roll mechanic. I Come on! I'm, I'm rolling here! What a fucking whiny cunt. Maybe take one or two goes at it to figure out its, uh, I don't know, patterns and attacks? And then devise a plan. But no. Now this is Phil. This is Phil, so he can't do that. I know exactly where I am. This is the area I was looking down on before from up there, remember? What do we have here? Oh, summon someone. Okay. It's a different area. So three hours is what, what people were fuck? saying? Look at that. Three that? hours that he couldn't beat this boss. God, look at the look at the fucking challenge he has 
on just a normal enemy, not even a boss encounter. And he's he's nearly getting his shit wrecked. Oh, this is gonna be painful to watch, isn't it? It's gonna be fucking painful to watch. You're right, uh, Bob Woggle. He he could have tried attacking, but that would that would be that would be contrary to his strategy. <laughs> I didn't even get the set after that grueling fight. I don't get the satisfaction. That grueling fight he used was at six health vials, uh, the blood vials on that grueling fight, that encounter on a bridge. He could have he could have taken that on any way he you know, but the way that he did it. If it takes that many blood vials for him to survive that encounter, we are going to be in for a painful fucking session of watching him take on an actual boss, a boss that people have said has high health that makes the encounter difficult. Unless you're going in with the fucking proper gear, kit it out the right way. But, uh, you know, this is Phil. Of course he can't do that. Chat saying, he rolls into attacks. Yes. I, I can imagine he does. And every fucking encounter, he does. His tactic is the attack button. I'm surprised he can find it. Watching that uh, battle with Ludwig, all he fucking did was run away. If I was in a war, the last person I'd want fighting on my side is Phil. Because he would be pissing himself in the fucking foxhole rather than facing the enemy. I'm getting shelled here. Come on, what is this? These are, these online, offline battle tactics. Area, new area. Whoa, where does this go? Oh, shit. What the hell? What the hell? What the fuck is that? It's a snail or something. Look at it. It's definitely a monster. Snorts. I, I, I'm going to put for the next couple of videos a snort, belch, and fart counter. It needs to be done. i just like to take one oh. playthrough he does and count how many times he does... Snail. He makes a bodily Look function. It. It's like a, sna a, a woman, right? A woman inside of like a snail shell. What the fuck is this? Huh. Look at him read off camera. Look at him. Look at the little faggot. He's looking off camera. I don't believe for a second that he's... he's. Yeah, look at this shit. Will chat help me? Will chat right, figure the mystery out for me? Thinking on my own the is hard. The whirly gig saw. The whirly gig saw. Wait a minute. Now he's going up. back. Look at him. What a dumb bastard. The whirly gig saw. I'm gonna go look at this corpse again. A trick weapon crafted by the workshop heretics, the powder kegs. He is the choice of the old hunter Walter, the beast eater. This weapon pummels beasts in the mace form, but its true strength lies in the attached mechanical saws. These discs lined with serrated teeth spin rapidly, thrashing the flesh of beasts into fine shreds. So here it is. First, it looks like this. Okay. Then when you transform it... Oh my god! Does he do that often? Uh, that's my understanding, is that any time he's in a game where he doesn't know what to do or how to think on his own, he immediately goes to the stream chat or his IRC chat. He needs somebody to help him. To hold his fucking hand. That's that's his thing, right? That's that's his uh, his strategy, his MLG strategy for beating video games is having other people do it for him. He should just rename it to "Let People Play for Me" rather than "Let's Plays" because that's that's really what he's doing. Huh? <clears throat> it's like cutting a nice fresh pizza. Look at that! <laughs> you want a nice big New York slice? <laughs> You're like Ash from fucking. Uh... Evil Dead. Here we go. Where is this guy? There's a hunter standing here. Where did he go? Where'd the hunter go? He walked up there. Darn, now he's not gonna have to get by the crows first. People are saying hold L2. What is this there? Oh, see, there, boom. He, he fucking outright admits it. People are saying hold L2. Why, why does a grown man need a chat to hold his hand while he plays video games? It's not sad enough that Phil gets paid 
for people to, you know, to play video games, for people to watch him play video games. But he can't even do it on his own. That's probably the most infuriating part. So not only are they paying him money to play the game, they're telling him how to play it because he can't even do that on his own. It's remarkable to me. How many people are in his chat when he does this shit? Because it's not on YouTube, and he's not on Twitch anymore, so it must be through his website. It must be through the IRC. How many people does he usually get in there to walk him through this shit? Get wrecked. Why don't you have remote play set up, you There's fat no fuck? Have your chat just here. literally play the Absolutely game for you. No way to tell what was happening. There's just too much going on at once. Thirty to one hundred people. I, could, I thought that the hunter was dead. Thirty to one hundred people. That's what he pulls in on his uh, specialized chat that walk him through. So he's got a dedicate. He's got a hundred people dedicated to walking him through video games. His chat, on average, uh, gets forty to one hundred. And then we've got a high estimate from Waka is good, saying 100 to 200 people showing up to watch Phil do this terrible shit. Well, I want to watch him fight the boss. I don't want to watch him run around and get his shit kicked in by crows and hunters. So let's see if we can jump ahead a little and find the spot where he'd be doing something. Okay, yep. Yeah, I think, here we go. So just to, just to recap, Phil gets his shit pushed in. I mean, a brutal ass-fucking by Ludwig at the four to six minute mark. He then spends the next 15 minutes avoiding the fight because he doesn't know how to handle it. Because I'm guessing nobody in chat can walk him through it. So here we go. Back to 2348. He's going back for his second encounter, I'm guessing. He's literally at the door waiting. Look. All right. Fucking asshole. Oh, I'm about to lose 12,000 uh, blood. Place your bets how quick this is going to go. can't see, look. That was even quicker. See what the problem is, look. It's the same problem as the first boss. Well, not the first, it's the same problem as the cleric beast. It's the same problem. The camera's a fucking piece of shit. Okay, so what excuse are we up to now? First time he lost, it was because the game doesn't let him roll. This time, because we saw him clearly roll quite a few times, it's the camera's fault. So anything the game does is why Phil loses. It's never Phil. It's never his inability to play. It's the role mechanics. It's the camera. That's what's at fault, not his casual fucking ability to play video games. I'm gonna fucking fix it. How many fucking, seriously, how many Souls games have they made that can't fix this fucking camera yet? That shit is so stupid. I just want to fucking see what I'm doing when I dodge against the wall. Phil, we all saw what you were doing. You were dying. You got your shit pushed in because you're terrible at video games. Garbage. Now he's silent. He's angry right now. That's why he's quiet, isn't it? He's legitimately angry he got his shit kicked in. Look at that face. Look at his face. He's so fucking sour right now. He's reading the Steam chat, or the fucking chat. They're probably telling him to get good. Okay, here we go. Third time's a charm. Right, Place your bets. Again. I'm gonna guess oh, somewhere in between a minute and 15 seconds. Let's go with that. Ah! 
I was dodging, but okay. Wow. Holy shit, that was under 30 seconds. Wow. Way to go, champ. That's a fair boss right there. A boss that literally can hit you from the entire screen away when you're running full speed and dodging. Still hits you. Great. Was the camera the, tr uh, the problem that time? Was that, was that the problem? What's hilarious is that most people playing this game are saying this this is the hardest boss in the whole DLC. After this, the whole DLC is like a cakewalk compared to this boss. Really? Because I was hearing that uh, the Orphan of uh, Cause, sometimes Causum, whatever the fuck, was uh, one of the more difficult ones because of the wild attack patterns. I haven't played it yet, so I can't even really comment on this. But uh, yeah, that was that was 20, 25 seconds? It's really remarkable. So, so far in his 27-minute video of fighting this boss, he's fought the boss for two and a half minutes. It's, it's fantastic. Get ready. We're going for attempt number four. Let's see how quickly this happens. Let's see what number four brings. comes from over here, right? She comes from here? Here? Wait a minute. She's hiding, I guess, right there in that little alcove. Okay. Here we go. Number four coming up. Well, let's try again. Uh, I'm going to split the difference again and say 45 seconds on this one. Let's do 45 seconds. Heal. He already surpassed my number. This might be his longest run yet. Let's see. Look at the amount of violence he's going through. Just like they're fucking candy. He's never gonna last. Oh, he doesn't even care. I, I don't even care. I'm getting my ass kicked by the boss. I don't even care. He walked in there with 20 blood vials. He had five. He took out, uh, God, I wouldn't even say a ninth of that health bar. I'm not even playing the game, and I'm already seeing the fucking attack patterns of the boss. He's got a leap. He's got a twirl. He's got a four to six hit combo where he fucking swings his head at you. I love how Phil always heals directly in front of the fucking enemy, and then he gets angry when he gets hit. Like, you can't figure out why, if you're standing directly in front of a boss that's aggroing on you, would it not be safe to heal in front of him? This is a 42-minute video. This is the first 42-minute video. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the other... You know what? I'm going to pop around. So this is part number five. Part number five on Ludwig. 
and we've seen that he's lost countless times already. Five times. Four of them to the boss. So let's back up. And uh, let me see how many how many videos in total he's been fighting this thing. Uh, where was it? Again, they're out of order, so it's a fucking pain to try to find it. Ludwig. Ludwig. I have been broken is the name of this video. I, I have been broken. Definition of insanity. I could have sworn there was a video where he actually said he's had enough. Oh, this might be it. Bloodborne, the old hunter's DLC has beaten me. Let's listen to this. This is going to be kind of the epilogue video to me doing this Bloodborne Old Hunters DLC. And at this point, really what I want to leave you with is this. I want you to understand that I'm certainly I'm not quitting this DLC because I'm angry or I'm full of rage. It's not a rage quit. It's more of a just... It's not a disappointment. It's just I not having fun. Like, let me, let me give you the direct comparison here, Okay. When I was playing Dark Souls 2, there were a lot of times when I was raging like crazy, right? But I motivated myself to play and get better, and I would keep playing so that I could fight those bosses and beat them. Outside of that... No, I have to call bullshit on this. It's my understanding that people carried him through these Souls games. Not just uh, giving him advice from chat, but actually going into his game as a, a fucking a summoned phantom and carrying his, lo you know, his weak ass. And I wonder if that's why he's quitting, because people can't come into his game and do it for him. So he doesn't have people who are able to come into his shitty game and fix his fuck-ups, and so he's calling it quits. I'm not angry. This isn't a rage quit. You made a dedicated video to this video game after getting your shit handed to you for three hours straight. I think that qualifies as a rage quit. The entire game, you think there's only one boss really I couldn't beat. It was that Mirror Knight, right? Everything else I pretty much beat legit um, and liked it. And then Bloodborne was kind of the same. Bloodborne, I didn't even summon anyone or anything throughout the game. I wanted to play it legit and get through it. And I, I mean, the difference here between Ebrietis and Ludwig is very simple. Ebrietis was the end game secret boss, like supposed to be insanely difficult, super hard, the biggest challenge in the main game. Now, of course, there was the Chalice Dungeon that's optional, and that was difficult too. But Ebrietis was supposed to be the end-all and be-all of the game, right? That's the secret origin of the blood and everything. So when you're playing, it's a big fight feel. I've come this far. I've done all the optional stuff. I've really, you know, gotten through and pushed through. And I'm going to beat this motherfucker, right? And I did. And I it beat, she beat my ass, right? When you think about Ebrietis, how long? It probably took me, if I remember correctly, it was like two hours on one, on one session. And then about an hour and a half on another session. Until finally I beat her and I was like... Yes! Yes! He beat her. He means Chet walked him through beating her. It, it, why spend the money? Why, why pay $20 for DLC on a game that it has a challenge factor to it? Where you know there's a challenge factor to it. It's a good game. Bloodborne is a fun, good game. And it has a challenge factor to it. So why drop the money on it and then complain that it's too difficult? Yeah, the boss is tough. Yes, I've heard people talk about its health bar and its attack patterns. But it's beatable. <laughs> he's just... He's hit a brick wall. He doesn't have instant gratification. That's what it is. He can't instantly win. And so in his mind, if you can't instantly win at something, it's bad. Which is just... It's fuck all retarded to have that mindset when you're playing a difficult video game. But that's Phil. It's so fun. You know, like... Yes, I beat it because it felt like I was motivated to do it because it's the secret thing and you get a trophy for it. And that was the difference. I, even though I was dying on every edit... Every time I felt like I was getting a little closer and I was having fun with it. And, you know, even though there were some really close, hilarious close calls. And then finally I came through and you're like, yes, you know, like this is great. I don't have any of those feelings on this Ludwig boss or Ludwig boss. It's the complete opposite situation. He's not some secret endgame boss. He's not some kind of, you know, wow, it's the big thing supposed to be the hardest thing. He's the first fucking boss of the DLC. And I guarantee you I could beat him. I guarantee you if I actually sat here and I committed myself to play as long Oh, listen to this bullshit. I'm not quitting because I get my ass kicked. I could totally beat this boss. I'm just quitting because I'm not having fun. Well, if you could totally beat the boss like you're saying you could, what was the three hours of you losing nonstop about? Is that just for fun? 
Was like that was that like your DuckTales video where you're fake angry? Anybody uh, what what was that video where he did the DuckTales thing with his fake rage where it's just the most forced um swearing you've ever heard? Is that what that was, Phil? Was this forced losing? You just want to make people feel better? Like, oh, look, I lose two guys. Grr, kind of thing. You could beat it. What a lying sack of fucking shit. As long as I, I possibly could, I played multiple sessions, I would beat them. But I don't want to. There's The bottom line is there's other stuff going on right now. That Other games, got, Fallout 4, I'm absolutely loving every moment of it. I want to play more of it. I absolutely cannot, you know, I can't wait to go back and play more of it, which I'm playing more of it today, actually. WWE 2K16, I've had my, the my career mode that I'm having tons of fun with has been on hold for two weeks because of all the new content and stuff that's been coming out. You know what I mean? So, in that regard, I just, you know, I have other stuff I'm dying to play. This is not the time, especially this time of year, to release a DLC with the first boss so fucking harder than every edit. That boss is harder than every That And... <laughs> He, he, everybody knows he chases views. He's desperate to make money at this point because uh, every other revenue stream for him is dried up. He fucked himself out of Twitch. His viewer base is diminishing nonstop. He had to delete a bunch of videos. And so the Bloodborne DLC is popular right now. So he must really be salty. Like, this guy is a money whore. So if he's refusing to do something where he could make money from it, he must be really fucking platinum mad about it. Boss Ludwig is like a huge and even more range, like giant version of Blood, Blood Starved Beast, but harder, much harder than Blood Starved Beast, you know? You know, Blood Starved Beast was tough because it was super fast, but it was also small, so you can maneuver around the room and you can mess around with it. This thing is like, I'm huge, I'm fast, and I'm also giant. You know, I'm a giant fucking monstrous boss that could just insta-kill you whenever it wants, and yes, like I said, I'm sure if I played it for another several hours, I mean, it could be five minutes and I luck out and I kill it, or it could be another five hours. And I know I could do it, but I don't care. You know, I have way more stuff to do. Other things that I've been playing, that I'm enjoying, that I want to get back to, you know? And it is what it is. You can blame me if you want, fine. I'm a, I'm a more casual Bloodborne player, yeah. I certainly did not. When I played Bloodborne, I loved it. I played every piece of content in the story of the game, all the secret bosses and everything. The only thing I didn't do was all the chalice dungeons because it just felt like a repetitive grind and some of those bosses were just insane, okay? Um, and so I loved the game and Bloodborne still, even though I, I, I'm, I'm basically saying fuck this DLC, I still think Bloodborne is one of my favorite games of the year and it's definitely in my top 10 favorite games of the year because this is DLC, this isn't the main game. Another snort. <laughs> That's all he does. He snorts and he belches. It really is. I can't stop focusing on that now. Uh, this, all this man does is make fucking nasty sounds while he's whining about being shit at video games. Oh, I, I could totally beat it. I love the game. The game is great. But it just beats my ass nonstop. G like, get good. Come on. Stop with the fucking excuses. So you're bad at video games. Fucking own up to it. Not everybody's good at video games. But I hate how he tries to always make it seem like it's something else. The roll mechanic doesn't work. The camera mechanic doesn't work. The DLC is intentionally too hard. It's not his fault. Just fucking own it, Phil. You know what I mean? This is not the main game, so it doesn't even factor into that. I want people to know that. Um, but at this time of year, let's release this insanely grueling, crippling DLC that, you know, more casual players... I mean, keep in mind, I haven't played this game since I beat it. So you're talking... I played the game March and April. That was it. I didn't get a new game plus... I didn't even try new weapon builds. I tried nothing. I just That was it for me. I was on to other stuff. I thought he said he loved the game. I thought he said it was one of his top 15 games ever. So if you love the game, why didn't you play New Game Plus? Why didn't you try different builds? There are fucking people still making Dark Souls 2 videos who put in thousands of fucking hours into that because they like the game. But you, you do it once and then you're done and you get your views and you never come back to it. I, I doubt he likes Bloodborne. I don't think he actually does like Bloodborne. And I think he's just really fucking angry that he can't beat this boss. And it's making him look like a dipshit. Like that Half-Life 2 video made him look retarded. And he just doesn't want to do it anymore. You know, I was on to other stuff. And a lot of people, that wasn't the case. They love Bloodborne so much, I have to keep playing it, I want to replay it. And that's fine. That If that's you, that's cool. That's who this DLC is for. It's not for me. They didn't make this DLC for me. They made this for the most insanely hardcore fans of Bloodborne that really want to get really good at the game, 
and dodge stuff and do and I'll be honest if you beat that boss good on you you're obviously way better than me at the game I admit it I'm not good at great or, or anything like that at Bloodborne I, I'm okay at it you know I grinded a lot in order to get through the original campaign of the game right why do you think I had such a hard time with Ebrietis because I was learning at the for the first time during the Ebrietis fight the, these core game mechanics that I guess a lot of people use to kill all the bosses there we go he's a casual he admits it you know when he's five minutes into the video and again, this whole bullshit of I love Bloodborne. I'm I'm a fan of Bloodborne. It's a top fifteen game for me. And then he goes on to say at the last optional boss fight that he takes part in, and I'm learning core gameplay mechanics. So he played Bloodborne for how long? Thirty or forty hours? And only by the time he got to Ebriatus did he figure out the core fucking gameplay mechanics? How stupid is he? So yeah, you know, it is what it is. I love Bloodborne. I love the original game. I think Ebrietis had that difficulty spike for a reason. Secret final boss or whatever. The Bloodborne DLC is not my cup of tea. I loved it until I got to this boss. And I'll be honest, if there's more bosses like that in this DLC, I'm very happy that I'm quitting. There's no way I'm going to waste that time. It's, I feel like that's wasted time. That's time, the hours of my gameplay life that I could be putting towards other games that I want to play, other games that I haven't even had a chance to play yet. You know, it could go towards that. You know what I mean? Another so I'm fucking snort. That this happened. I'm disappointed, but I would much rather play something that I'm enjoying than continue to grind and waste time on this. And I'll be honest, I guarantee you, I guarantee fucking to you that these videos of me fighting Ludwig, no one's gonna really give a shit. I guarantee it. People will watch the first one and say, okay, Phil didn't beat him. Let's see. Oh my god, Phil still didn't beat him. Oh my god, Phil still didn't beat him. Okay, when does he beat him? Oh, he never beat him. All right, well, forget it. And they'll watch this final video, and that'll be it. No one wants to sit here and watch me wa do this and <laughs> Nobody wants to sit here and watch me play video games. At least he's finally admitting it, folks. At least he's come to the realization that nobody wants to watch him play video games. What? <sighs> Isn't that your whole brand? Aren't you, you, that's what you've built your online presence around, is people watching you play video games. So if, if your fan base doesn't want to watch you play video games, what does that tell you, Phil? What dark realization should you be having at this moment in your life if the people who pay you to watch video, you play video games, just don't want to watch you anymore? Loosely for hours on end, you know. The stream had pretty decent attendance. And if I were a different kind of gamer, who all I did was live stream and I interacted with the stream chat, then maybe it would have made sense and been profitable. For me to do this like this. It's Every not. time. I have it's like way, the eighth way snort. more things that I want to get to that I will enjoy more, will be better for the business, than sit here and just try to fight this one fucking boss for this fucking long. Seriously. So. So that's it. It's not a rage quit. It's more of a, I'm just not having fun. And I'm not going to continue to kill myself, especially during this busy... To kill myself. Come on. Fuck you. You sit on your ass on a couch and play video games. You have a dream job. You have, the dr you have a job people would fucking kill for. You're paid money to play video games. You don't get a much more cake position than that. You should be thanking your lucky fucking stars. If I was getting paid thousands of dollars from Patreon to sit on my ass and play video games, I don't care if I died to that fucking boss a thousand times. I'd keep doing it. Because it's a video game. They're fun. And you're getting money to play it. What an ungrateful cunt. And you know what? That's the perfect segue, by the way. His cuntishness to uh, go take a look at his Patreon, because I heard something, and I want to see if this is true. So let's see if we can, um, let's see if we can find this. Should be a link to it here. Patreon, there we are. All right, let's, let's take a look at this. Dark Side Phil is creating gaming videos, creative series, and vlogs. Gaming content creator since 2008. You know, back in the day, I used to have arguments with people saying that that was going to be a title people were going to give themselves. And I think there are a few videos of me talking about it, but that content creation was going to be the new internet job. And here we are, gaming content creator since 2008. 223 Patreons, $1,403.77 a month. He gets 1400 bucks a month to play video games. And we just heard him whine. Because the video games were too tough. Well, we heard him whine in between snorting like a fucking pig. A pig in heat. So, we're going to take a look. We're going we're gonna to read through this. I've never read through this properly. So, buckle in. Um, 
Since 2008, I have created independent, driven gaming content on YouTube. After losing my office job in 2010, I partnered with Machinima and have been making video game playthroughs, reviews, vlogs, and other creative projects as my primary source of income. So for five years now, five years Phil has been using this to make money. Half a decade, his job title has been YouTube. That is depressing in itself. Pledging will allow me more freedom from the daily burden, the daily burden, of overall video views and allow me to embark on more creative projects that aren't just raw gameplay of new releases. Isn't that what he's doing right now? Phil, you're making $1,400 a month and all you do is upload raw video. Uh, what, what series are you making? So far this year, I've started, oh, here we go. I've started a series of best worst montages and upgraded my editing software in the process. What editing software? What, what, he's acting like he went out and bought uh, the Adobe Suite for $20,000. They, they have received overwhelmingly positive feedback. We're going to go take a look at his video series. And I guarantee you, there's no overwhelming positive feedback. Every video I see of his has more dislikes than likes. And this is a style of project I'd like to work on instead of just raw gameplay of new video game releases. This includes edited montages, higher production value reviews, mini marathons, older games that viewers would like to see, and more. In addition, pledging will allow me to play games that I want to play, rather than always sticking to what's new or popular. By pledging, you allow me to play games I otherwise might not get a chance to play due to performance concerns such as classics in my youth, JRPGs, and other games that might not be considered the height of mainstream popularity. So far, Patreon has allowed me to play things I've missed. Minecraft? Are you fucking kidding me? Is this faggot really kidding me? That's what he's talking about? Uh, I want to play games that are off the beaten trail. I want to play games people might not have heard of. Like this asshole's going to do a fucking walkthrough of Crystallis or something. <laughs> what game does he list? Minecraft. That's Phil's idea. Minecraft. Yeah, that's not a that's not a popular game people make a shit ton of money playing, Phil. Oh, I might have missed Minecraft. How did you miss it? Were you living under a rock? As well as try out franchises I'd never dreamed of delving into before. Persona 4 and Yakuza, are you fucking kidding me? These are what he considers hidden indie titles. Persona 4, Yakuza, and Minecraft. Darkside Phil is fucking clinically retarded at this point, in my opinion. In addition, in exchange, I will provide premium perks. Those are what we're going to look at. To those who choose to be ongoing patrons of my work, I will also be setting up overall goal levels at which I will hold special series events once hitting a financing milestone. So here we go. Here's his pledge levels. This is what you're going to get when you give Phil money. Pledge $1 or more per month. There are 97 people that are giving him $1 a month. Patrons who donate $1 a month will have their name in text, in text, featured in a special thanks to the following section of a video, this week in preview, at least once a month. This is a reoccurring perk and will happen once a month for as long as you remain a $1 Patreon. So if you give him a dollar, he's going to copy-paste your name to the end of a video nobody's ever going to watch, and that'll happen once a month. <laughs> that's, that's worth it. Pledge $5 or more per month. Patrons who donate $5 or more will receive an exclusive forum title. Well, that's hot shit. And a section to post it on my website, The King of Hate. In addition, you'll be included in the nomination voting process when Patreon goal milestones are hit. You will be a part of the decision process on what gets played during multiplay or multiple events. In the past year, these have included games for my best worst of DSP classics, Patreon's choice game playthroughs, and also which games I play during mini marathon events. So, if you give him a dollar, he'll put your name at the end of a video. If you give him five dollars, he'll give you the special forum title of retard on his website. Pledge ten dollars or more per month. Patrons who donate $10 or more a month not only get all the perks below this level, but will receive a verbal thank you shout out during ongoing vlog series. This is a reoccurring perk and will happen once a month. That's the one that blew my mind. That, that absolutely blows my mind. You are paying this fat dumb retard $10 to say your name. For the privilege of this idiot saying your name, you are paying him $10 a month. He, he has such little concern for his fan base and interacting with them in any way whatsoever that you have to pay him for him to acknowledge that you exist. Ten dollars. Ten dollar he dues a month to have him say your name. And there are 25 people doing it. 
pledge twenty dollars or more per month. Eleven people are doing this. Patreons who donate at least twenty a month will have or receive priority access for Ask the King. That means that every month when I produce Ask the King, there will be a special segment for those donors. They will receive or they will have a priority section to submit their Are you kidding me? So for twenty dollars a month, he's gonna let you ask him questions. Think about this. You have to pay him $10 for him to say your name. You have to pay him $20 for him to even talk to you, is really what that says. You need to pay me $20 per month for me to answer you back when you have a question. Oh, here's a limited time offer. 18 to 20 left, only two of them. Pledge 30 or more per month. We'll receive one of the following Project 7 t-shirts. From their limited run in 2012. It's a limited run. That's a collector's item for all you all you people. Oh, shirt update. There's an update here. We have very few of the Project 7 Trio t-shirts left. However, I have every size from S to XL available and the death face design. Well, see, this doesn't jive. Why are you telling people in an update you don't have a lot of the shirts left, but you're asking them to give you $30 per month to get a shirt? Only two people have taken it. So... Why are there 20 slots left if you don't if you only have very few left? Remarkable. Somebody's doing $50 per month. People who donate 50 or more per month will receive a personalized video from me, roughly 10 to 20 minutes in length. You will be able to submit a question which I will answer in the video and it will be personally addressed to you. Think of it as your own personal edition of Ask the King. So far, patrons have loved the private videos that I've made for them. All two of them. All two of those people have liked it. And here we go. Here's the big money. $75 per month. Only one person's taken this. People who donate 75 or more per month will be featured, if they desire to be, in a future creative project. This can be audio, visual, or both based on the script. Update. It is uncertain if Project 7 reboot will reoccur or will occur. Therefore, if you pledge this goal or level and have previously pledged it, you will have the opportunity to take place in the upcoming Thanksgiving Christmas holiday special. More details coming soon. Now, I don't, I, I want to make this clear because some, some people are confused by this. So let me explain. I don't care if somebody has a Patreon. There are a lot of people that make videos and, the, you know, the people that give them money really like the videos and the videos are really good quality. Uh, you, I mean, look at the different people on the fucking Patreon that are making boatloads of money. Nobody has an issue with. I, I don't give a shit. My problem with Phil, and when you read through these uh, pledge donation levels, is the absurdity of what he's giving you in return. It's just, it's insulting. You have to pay him money for him to say your name. You have to pay him money for him to answer a question you have. And his big perk at the end of the day is, he'll answer the question and record him answering the question, and then send you the video of it. Like his visage, his image and audio is so sacred and sacrosanct, that him sending you that video, that's, an, that's a reward. Oh, and if you give a little bit more money, you get to ask a question in a video he answers. Everything is related to him interacting with you. you. You have to pay this man money to have any interaction with him at all. It's fucking ludicrous. Er, it's, I thought it thought It's ludicrous that he does that. And there are people paying for it. I guess that's what blows my mind more than anything. What is this about? I'm a former comp oh god. I am a former competitive Street Fighter player who in 2008 decided to goof around with a camera while playing video games. I inadvertently became an innovator of the YouTube gaming scene for my unedited raw full playthroughs of the newest games. I now live stream daily on my gaming channel. He was an innovator. I don't remember Phil's name ever being in the innovation list of early YouTube gaming celebrities. I, I seem to follow that list uh, because I watched those videos back in the day, and I don't remember this asshole at all. But he's an innovator. An innovator making money. Just remarkable. What's his milestone? Oh, November goal. Patreons choose the marathon game. So if, if he gets $1,250 per month, people get to choose the game he plays. That's your big reward. But here's what I'm confused about. Up here, wasn't he bitching, saying, if you give me money on Patreon, I'll be able to play what I want to play? And then his goal is, make me play what you want me to play. Fucking ridiculous. 
This man is making $1,400 being terrible at video games, and he still whines about it. Look at, look at his face. Uh, you know, I hope he does realize that the internet has a very short attention span. He's been doing it for five years, and you can already see the drop-off. He has streams that get 200, 300, 400 people watching on an account that has 178,000 subscribers. He is at the end of his, atten you know, the internet's attention span. He is in the twilight of gaming celebrity on YouTube. And he's going to have to get a real job eventually. That 1400 bucks isn't going to last. It's going to dwindle more and more as time goes on. People are going to watch his videos less and less. What is he going to get for a job? He's going to go into a job interview, and what is his resume going to say? Played video games on YouTube? Who the fuck is going to hire him? Uh, I'm reading through the chat right now. Again, there's a delay, so... Uh, what is this? Somebody's saying he rigs the votes. Keldor7, he rigs the votes. Are you talking about for the game they choose? That's just fucking pathetic if that's true. Bob, I have 23p in my pocket. I want you to have it. How do I give you 23p? Well, I would suggest you donate that money immediately to the gout charity. It's important that we cure that terrible affliction. <laughs> there are too many people suffering from it nowadays. Panda can get him a job. I don't know. He can't even cook for himself. I don't know what kind of work he's capable of doing. Didn't he work at, like, a helicopter factory or something? <laughs> What was his job before he started doing this shit? Uh, let's see. By the end of 2015, if Phil is not gone, you gotta answer me, Freddy. One tournament of his shit version of a game, and he didn't even get first place, he got fourth. Are you talking about when he played Super Street Fighter uh, Extraordinaire Edition on the SNES at a fucking tournament where nobody get, went there to play that particular version? I think his Machinima deal gets renegotiated in January. Why is Machinima giving him any deal at all? He gets no views. He has no viewers in his streams. What does Machinima get from being partnered with him? Uh, Baboda? Uh, Jim, say my name and I'll donate $10. Gout uh, Charity thanks you, Baboda. Oy vey, we, we have to wire him 200000 for my Patreon. Uh, Bob, where is Wombat Sue? Uh, well, currently she's making me dinner because she's got, um, a, she's riddled with cancer, so I woke her up and told her to make me popcorn. That's where Wombat Sue is. Uh, Markman, Jim Sterling is a cuckold. I saw there's a picture going around of his wife, if that's what you're referring to when you say that. I might agree. Phil puts the photo of him with Sonic Hat on his business cards. No, he doesn't. Does he really? Patricia 87, does he really do that? That's, uh... That's fucking sad, really, to be honest, in a lot of ways. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, he's got a vlog channel. You know what? Let's go take a look at King of Hate. Let's go see what this is. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, actually, you know what? First, let's see what we've got here. This channel's been around since 2012. He's got 31,000 subs on it and 10 million views. So this is where he puts up his Ask the King of Hate shit. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Let's let's take a look. Hello, everyone. DSP here, and welcome to the November 2015. Ah, uh, is this is this a, a advertisement? Is that what we're watching right now? Does he have some kind of advertising deal with Loot Crate? Is that why he's doing this? Loot Crate unboxing. Now, I apologize to you all in advance. Uh, cold weather is here. It has hit us, and I have the sniffles. Meaning, uh, you're probably going to hear me. Uh, sniffling and maybe blowing my nose or something during this video because uh, it is annoying me pretty badly. But anyway, I uh, digress. Let's get started with the unboxing for November. And I'm wondering, you know, again, what is the theme for this month? They typically have a theme that they go along with. It's too early for Christmas, so it couldn't be that, right? Uh, but I will say this. I'll preface this video with this. If you like my Loot Crate unboxings, if you want to possibly get your own subscription to Loot Crate, Fucking done. It's an advertisement. I don't give a shit. Fuck this. Piece of shit. Fuck you, Phil. Alright. Um, let's go look at something else. Are these all going to be videos of him whoring out services? Is that what this is? Hey, hey, if you like these videos, and you want to go to Loot... No, I don't want to go to Loot Crate, Phil. I have no fucking interest. In fact, if I ever did have an interest in Loot Crate, watching your video now makes me uninterested. Are you kidding me? He eats food? DSP tries it. Cheddar onion b 
Butterfly Jack Burger. The man with gout, ladies and gentlemen. Tears be uh, Look at those. Look at that. 181 dislikes. I gotta add one for you there, Phil. That's my part. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of DSP Tries It. And over the, the years that I've done DSP Tries It, I will fully admit that there are some times that perhaps I embellish a little bit, sometimes when I exaggerate a little bit for dramatic effect, although I think the series has gotten better over the years, and overall it really is a better, uh, a better, uh, a better series for serious critique of the food. And Is this nigger serious? A better critique of the food. You're eating, you're eating Jack in the Box, asshole. You're not at a fucking Michelin starred restaurant eating a three hundred dollar filet mignon. You're eating buttery Jack, the new signature beef patty with garlic herb butter. What do you for the connoisseur of fat fuckery? Come watch DSP tries it as he shovels down fucking cow fat in his fat fucking mouth. You gout infested retard. <laughs> it's gotten better. Things oh, that boy. I try in it versus, you know, a lot of the things I used to try when I started were just ridiculous food items that you kind of knew were going to be bad, okay? What I'm trying today honestly sounded good to me when I heard about it. And now that I've purchased it and I'm about to try it, I am actually dreading the fucking worst. It's a 13-minute video for you to take a bite of something and say, yeah, it tastes good, or nah, it doesn't taste so good. 13 minutes. 13 minutes for him to finish that burger and give us his critique of it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be trying a variation on the Buttery Jack Burger from Jack in the Box. Now, if you're not aware, these have been around for several months. In fact, I think I remember... Holy shit. And we're going to skip forward to when he shoves it in his fat fucking mouth. However, I get the feeling I'm going to have difficulty because the cheese... Oh, God, that looks horrendous. The cheese is already melted. And that's kind of the faux pas with the cheeseburger. See, ladies and gentlemen, his quality has improved. When you're doing a food review, there's nothing better than getting your fat, ugly fucking man hand in the middle of the shot. That hand is fatter than the burger. His hand is bigger than the burger. This fat fuck's hand is that large that it eclipses anything in focus on the camera. That's that's quality filmsmanship there, Phil. That's, that's what I want to see when you're talking about eating food. Really good. With the amount of grease and butter, has to be at least a thousand calories. I'd be curious if someone, I'm sure someone will look it up now and put it in the comments, how many calories it is. Like you care. You'll shovel it down your throat. It could be 14,000 calories and you'd still eat it. So there it is, their toasted buttery bun with this. Interesting because it smells a little tangy, but at the same time, all I can smell tons of butter too. All right. So at least I've got it on the bun now. I can at least lift it and take a bite of it and attempt to taste it. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. A bunch of teenagers working there, by the way. Uh, which is hilarious. Oh, I gotta tell you this. I was carded. They carded me at the drive-thru. I get. I don't even know where to begin, really, with this particular conversation that he's having with his audience. Who gets carded at a restaurant? I've never gone to a fast food restaurant and got carded before. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe they wanted to make sure he didn't have, like, a medical alert bracelet, and he has the card form of that. Like, excuse me, sir, but you're pretty goddamn obese. Can we see some identification to make sure you don't have gout before we give you this deep-fried fat burger? And I, I like how he's... The whole video is him talking about, this looks disgusting. I don't know if I want to eat it. He's going to eat it. He's going to eat all of it. He's going to shovel that down his mouth. Six minutes in, still hasn't bitten it. I should bring up this point, too. No line at Jack in the Box. There was one car in front of me. They were gone. It wasn't like they were at rush hour. It was busy, and they were pumping out a bunch of food, and they fucked this up. No, they just they just fucked it up of their own accord. So I'm gonna attempt. All these glitched hamburger mechanics. Come on, uh, this is this is this is online restaurant lag. He's actually bitching about the me <laughs> He's found a way to treat real life like video games. He's whining about fast food mechanics at this point. This. I don't know if I could if I should eat this. You know what I mean? I'll take a few bites, I'll tell you how it tastes, but, I mean, oh my god. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna take a bite of this. This reminds me of the fucking KFC Double Down, quite honestly, right now. This could be the most unhealthy thing I've ever eaten for this program. Oh my, look at this. Alright, I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Oh god, you can hear the fat. Did you hear that? 
you can hear the fat in the background. You, you could hear him becoming fatter as the video progresses. Listen to that. It's like a fucking pig in a trough. Quite honestly, right now, this could be the most unhealthy thing I've ever eaten for this program. Oh my, look at this. All right, I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Did you, can you fucking hear this shit? It took him seven minutes to take the first bite. Seven fucking minutes to take a bite of a food review. Take a bite. Is it good? Is it not? Move on. But he's got a bitch about getting carted by teenagers and bugged fast food mechanics. <laughs> Holy shit. So let me explain. I actually think that if this burger were made properly, if this burger were not insanely doused in this butter sauce and it had the appropriate amount on it, it might actually taste good. Because the components are there. Cheddar cheese is good. Cheddar cheese goes with beef. Sirloin steak is good. That goes with the flavor of... This is remarkable. This is fucking remarkable. Let's see if we've got more videos of him eating shit. Oh, yep, DS. Is this what the whole fucking series is? Andrew, you showed me his uh, Instagram where it's him making... He talks, he baby talks to his hamsters on his Instagram, if you don't know. Uh, and, and apparently had a lot of food videos up there. Wow. Boy, howdy. Holy fucking shit. It's just, it's 107 videos of him eating food. What the fuck? Look at it, yeah. Arby's and fucking uh, Popeye's, Taco Bell. Are there even 108 fast food restaurants? How is he finding them? I, f I figured like after 20, you've run out of subjects for your video. He's at 107. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, let's, let's listen to his Ask the King, the most recent one. Rambo censorship and doing what we love or what you love. Lay up, motherfucker. Okay, everyone. Welcome back to the third and final part of Ask the King for November 26, 2015. Let's jump into it because we've got about two pages left of questions to get through. All right. First question from Eric. He says, uh, Phil, I admire. Oh, look, there's the, the Patreon thing. Pledge $20 to get your questions answered. I admire your honesty and hope you can answer my question since you're quite open about this. I know you'll probably get this a lot, but what's up with you and John Rambo? Did you have a falling out? Uh, is it because you two are far away? I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Thank you. The bottom line is this. I will tell you completely 100% honest with you. And, uh, you know, people will probably try to make shit up or say they don't believe me because they want to believe drama queen shit. Um, the bottom line is this. When I lived in Connecticut... For years, John and I did co-op commentary, co-op gameplay. We did the show Smart Guys. We traveled together. We did Street Fighter gameplay together. We did a lot of stuff, projects and everything together. In all of that time... How can he snort this much? You know, I wanna, I'm going to jump ahead from this one. I want to hear what he had to say on censorship. What his problem is... Let's see if we can find this here. ...and say that they're bad or they're... ...and marketed like that. And because of the sensationalist bullshit, people bought the game. Time to complain about every little thing in life. You need to get one. Because if you actually had a life, you wouldn't have time to nitpick everyone else's shit. Okay. Next question. Um, Hurtful. Let's see here. We're running out of time, so I'm going to skip a few of these that weren't very, uh, weren't, weren't some of the best ones. Ah, this one I did want to particularly bring up because this is a pertinent one. There you go, folks. If you give him 20 bucks to ask him a question on support the, uh, or ask the king, if you pay him 20 bucks, he's going to skip them because they're not very good. Especially when it comes to me, I think. All right. So this one is from <clears throat> Daz, Daz Gooch, okay, His, or Marcus. He says, I've been a fan since 2008. You got me through high school and now through college. My question for you is two parts. As a college, oh, no, I'm sorry. He had a second question that really had nothing to do with this, so I just wanted to answer the first half of his question, which is this. As a college student at UCLA, I was told to major major in what you'll make money in and not what you love, but you should minor in what you love. What's your opinion on that? So basically he was told, probably by guidance counselors and people there, focus on your, your studies, your academics, on a job that's going to... Somebody asking in the chat, uh, sorry to interrupt, are you vegan? God, no, I'm not vegan. I love meat. Who doesn't like eating meat? Are you kidding me? It's fucking delicious. But uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not fucking vegan. I just hope you guys are noticing. People pay him money to ask him questions on his Patreon. Not only does he skip them over, but when he does answer your fucking questions, he cuts them in half. 
I got a question here from somebody. It's two parts. I'm just going to ignore the second part. I I guess what, is he going to get a ten dollar refund, Phil? Because he only answered half his question. To make you money, and then take a minor in the thing that you actually like. And you know that's sad. It's sad because it is gripping reality, and it is very true for most people. I am one of the very few people on this planet that, for the past five years, well, it's been early 2001 to now, so I guess technically that's what four, four and a half years, almost five years. I've been able to make a living doing what I love, gaming playing video games, reviewing video games, sharing that experience with you, joking around, having fun. That's what I've been able to share with you and make a living doing for the past several years. Most people don't get to do that. Most people, they have a hobby or, or a job or, or, I'm sorry, a hobby or a, a love or an affinity for something and they wish they could do it and they can't. You know, right now, I'm sure there are people that will love, I would love to open up this kind of store and make this product and sell it to people and just, just do that for the rest of my life. I would like to paint. I would like to dance. I would like to sing. I would like to play a sport. I would, everyone has aspirations, right? And unfortunately, those aspirations, a lot of us, when we become adults, they grow. Uh, somebody in chat saying, uh, where is it? I just lost it. I just lost Oh, Bob, you have to listen to DSP's ex-friend's recent response video. Uh, what is the title of it? I will I will pull it up if you can give me the title of the recent response video I will play it and we'll 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 listen to it we'll see what they have to say what was it in response to exactly so walk is good saying meat is murder meat is evil meat is fucking delicious I don't know what you're talking about meat is good shit uh Jim can you rock a cowboy hat like that no I'm sorry I'm straight I don't I wouldn't wear a cowboy hat like that. That that sends a different signal altogether. Brokeback Phil. That's uh that's an app nickname. I guess the S in DSP stands for snort, because that's all he does in his videos is snort. Uh yeah, Phil, just be a fat fuck loser bitching about playing video games instead of majoring in physics or material science and actually contribute to society. God, what a fucking parasite. Uh yeah, yeah, that would be that would be an app description. It's on SoundCloud. Okay. I'll I'll try to look it up here in a bit then. It's uh remarkable. Yeah, so people pay him 20 bucks to answer a question. He doesn't even answer them. He ignores the questions you're paying him money to answer, and then when he does, he cuts out half the question you asked. Just just remarkable. And he's wearing that gay cowboy hat while he does it. Well, you know, let me actually. I'm gonna see if I can find something. See if it's all interlinked. Damn. Oh, should we go take a look at his cafe press? I haven't looked at this in a while. Oh boy. Look at the amount of shit he sells. Blow this out, Serpo, Serpo, Super Turbo Revolution. New DSP logo products. Let's see what his new hot products are. The ego of this man. <laughs> it's, this is his... You know, there was a guy on YouTube named Helsing. And I used to give him shit all the time. Because he actually opened... This is way before Phil. He opened a Cafe Press uh, account. And all his products were nothing but his face on things. He sold notebooks with his face on it. He sold coffee mugs with his face on it. He had a clock. A fucking clock with his face on it. And just, it's remarkable to me that people sell that kind of shit. He's selling a fucking t-shirt with his face on it. Who's going to wear that? Who are you going to encounter in real life that's going to see you wearing a t-shirt with DSP's gout-ridden ass on it and say, yeah, that guy's not a loser at all? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, the DSP thong. He's got thongs for sale, too. <laughs> that's what I want. I want a little piece of DSP wedged up in my asshole. That sounds really, that sounds like a bargain. Look at these prices, $26. $26 to buy this fucking t-shirt. Oh, he does. He has coffee mugs. Look at it. Coffee mugs and thermoses and everything else. All with his shitty, the shitty little picture just slapped onto it. That's, uh, that's great. Jim, do you go to Hot Topic? Uh, no, I'm not a teenage girl. I don't go to Hot Topic. Yes, uh, somebody said the long box guy. Yes, Helsing used to sell fucking clocks and notebooks and <laughs> coffee mugs with his picture on it. And don't let him deny it, because he totally fucking did that. 
He knows exactly what I'm talking about. You can go ask him. I don't think he does it anymore. But yes, that's what he used to do. You would buy me one? Are you going to buy me a DSP t-shirt? I, I could use, you know, a dusting rag. It'd be an expensive dusting rag, but why not? Nobody's going to buy that. I'd love to see the sales uh, statistics for his coffee press store. I'm going to guess, or cafe press, I'm going to guess he has nothing. Nobody's buying it. Gout proof thong. That would be a remarkable product. Uh, his Twitter, let's see what he's tweeting about. Let's see what he's tweeting about right now. I'm now uploading today's new DSP Tries It. It's a new breakfast... Oh my god, he's fucking uploading more food items. It's a breakfast item I ran into at the local supermarket. Just remarkable, Phil. You've, you've, you've reached the bottom of the barrel. People won't watch your gaming videos, so now you're trying to get them to pay you so you can eat food on camera. That's what your life has become. People are paying you money to eat. <laughs> I think that's called fucking pity. That's pity money. That's charity money. Also, FYI, I plan to do WWE Sims for the first time in a year come Christmas as a holiday special. <laughs> well, that's that's great. That's uh, that's great. That's good stuff. Oh, shit, is this his Instagram? Um, let me find those hamster videos. Let's see if we can find these. Look at look at this. This is his Instagram. It's nothing but food. <laughs> Just pounds of food. That's all he puts up there. Everything. Oh, and uh, I guess this is him. Uh, let's see. One thousand or seventeen hundred followers. Thanks to my now over seventeen hundred Instagram followers. Love sharing stuff with you from time to time. Will we hit two K by the end of twenty fifteen? I don't know. That's that's a question for the ages. Oh, here we go. I think, let's see if, if this is it. Cinnamon, what do you think about the release of Fallout 4 on Monday? How about you, Raisin? Oh, we're in a tizzy. I, I need to find the specific ones. There are actual ones where he says some ridiculous shit, and they're great sound clips. Uh, maybe this is it. In a rare cooperative moment, the girls are enjoying Millet together. Yummy. Munch, munch, munch. <laughs> I want to make a soundboard with this shit. Yummy. Munch, munch, munch. There's another one. Oh, God, if I can find it. I should have fucking bookmarked him. Oh, what was I thinking? Oh, that's, that's, that should be the face he puts on t-shirts. Yeah, you know what? I should take this and print it out as a poster and then find a gay bar in town and cut the hole out of his mouth and put it over the glory hole and just see how people react. Because that's what that face says to me. Look at his eyes. Like, they're weirdly spaced apart. God, he's an ugly asshole. Oh, fucking hell. Just nothing but him cooking. He, here he let Panda Lee out of her cage. Oh, you two. Share that treat. Don't fight. It's for both of you. Yummy. Good morning, Cinnamon. Ooh. Hello. Hello, Raisin. Happy fall. This, this is this man's life. All he does is eat and play video games. And he shares it with everybody. Like, people need to know this shit. Like, look at this. He thought it was important enough that he, uh, he put this up on Instagram. Like, you need to know that he saw candy bars at a store. It's really important that you see Halloween pretzel treats exist. <laughs> I don't know what he's buying Nature Boy for, but it's starting to make that glory hole theory look a little bit more accurate. Just saying. I don't even know what the fuck this is. Oh, Phil. You were just... You were a gem. You were just a treat. I would go to visit his website, but... Uh, let's see what he's got on playlists. Let's see what, what videos Phil makes. Emerald... Did he go to a comic convention? Jesus, did he have a fucking panel? That's, uh... 
that would be unexpected. You know what? I'm actually curious enough to see what this is. I'm sorry. Does this say he's doing a walkthrough of a comic convention? <laughs> All right, so we are at Emerald City Comic Con. This is the main floor, floor four. As you can see, all around us, crazy kinds of costumes. This is actually the cosplay area where people are forming to help themselves basically with their costumes and stuff. They have costume repair area and stuff like that. The show floor is this way. As you're gonna see, we're gonna walk a little bit. We're gonna see some cool costumes along the way. <clears throat> I got a guy glowing over here. <laughs> I don't know what he's supposed to be. I love how everybody at this convention doesn't know who the fuck he is. Nobody's looking at him. Nobody's walking up to him. He's just some random asshole in the crowd. All those, all those internet walkthrough videos don't mean shit in real world. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. Yeah, okay. I thought there would be more to this. It's literally just him at a fucking comic convention. Uh, it looks like another one there. He went to the zoo. Apparently, Panda Lee wanted to see her family. <laughs> Try to break him out, maybe. One year anniversary home tour. You know what? Let's take a look at his house. Hello, everyone. Dark Side Phil here. And yes, it is official. As of this past weekend, uh, Leanna and I, my girlfriend and I, have lived in the state of Washington for one year. It was one year ago when we actually moved and ventured across the country from the state of Connecticut and of course for Leanna from the state of Pennsylvania and we moved together in here to our beautiful new home in Washington State. It was a, a heck of a ride. I mean, it's been, there's been ups and downs, I won't lie. There's uh, great things and not so great things, but overall, I've been saying this recently, I wouldn't give up this, this I don't use that anymore. And you know, all kinds of empty boxes and trash. In fact, this here is, this bag that you see is all the packaging that this stuff came in was in is here so I eventually need to break up those are all boxes for the individual giant light bulbs that came with it. I need to break down those obviously and clean it up and you know Leanna actually installed right here for the house so we do have two fire extinguishers here in the garage if there ever was a fire run down and grab one so so moving on here in this frontal area of the house we got the front bathroom it's gonna look very much like you've seen it before uh, it's no different, we, you know, we, very basic. It's got that ridiculous, silly, blown glass sink that it had. Uh, boxes showed up over the past week of things that were being delivered. This is his one-year anniversary. Why is there shit strewn everywhere? Also said, somebody uh, in the chat said I should look up DSP tries it cooking tuna fish sandwiches? Uh, let's, would that be on his hate vlogs? I don't know. I'll, I'll try to take a look. DSB tries it. Uh, I'm not seeing it. it fuck. Uh, whoever said that, if you could put it in the chat again, I'll look it up. Yeah, I'm skipping. I, I'm skipping his house full of debris. Is it uh, enthralling, Goat Balloon? Are you enjoying it? You only watched uh, 30 seconds of it. There are four videos, so there's an hour of him wandering around his house. Everybody's commenting on her ass. That's probably the only interesting thing in that fucking video. Jim, go to his Axe Body Wash review. Axe Body Wash, alright. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't know what channel he has it on, so... Just be Axe... Body Wash... Oh, you weren't... Really? DSP tries it. This is DSP, and I'm using the new Axe Body... <laughs> Holy shit. This is fantastic. That's not it. How's that shit? I'm using the new Axe Body Detailer to try to take a shower here. I'm trying to not get too much water outside of the shower, which is not an easy feat. Um... I'm also using, oh, that's the Axe Body Detailer right there. I'm also using Axe Skin Contact Body Wash, which apparently is supposed to have small uh, particles which you use in your body shower to uh, clean your... 
He's actually reviewing soap. <laughs> he's reviewing body wash. Did Panda Lee need information on her competitors? Is that why he's doing this? I also like the super tight camera angle. Like, he's so ashamed of what he looks like. He's got to keep that fucking thing focused on his face so you don't see his man titties. Maybe they'll pull back later. I've got some hope for this. Let's see. Let's see what uh, what we're in store for. Your body, let's see what happens here. All right. Working up a ladder in a shower. Oh, 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 shit. That's a lot of water. Oh, shit. Try not to get too much water outside of the shower, but you know. All right. How about the balls, huh? Yeah, Phil. How about those balls? Are you, what? What exact? Where is this video going? When you're bringing up balls naked in the shower, Phil. Look at that face. Look at the. This is what Panda Lee sees laying on top of her at night, with that exact look on his face as he thrusts in and out of her childlike body. That is what she gets. This fucking baboon-haired, gout-infested fat fuck just thrusting on top of her. <laughs> ah, yeah. Use the detailer to wash your balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. This man is filming himself masturbating on YouTube. <laughs> DSP tries it. Yeah, DSP tries a restraining order because his audience is fucking creeped the hell out. That's fantastic. Scrub it, scrub the balls. Oh. I use the detail inside to wash off. Oh, my God. Oh. You don't want to use the detail inside to wash your balls. Oh. Oh, that hurts. Ow. Ooh. Chad, how do you feel about watching an obese 30-year-old man masturbate in a shower on YouTube? You having fun? Are you enjoying that? Is that good times? <laughs> I'm gonna try to wash my legs, but that's not gonna happen. I'm not getting too much water everywhere, so you know. He can't wash his legs because he doesn't have the fucking sponge on a stick that fat fucks use. It works. Uh, it washes your body. Oh, uh, your hairy ass, disgusting Italian body. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, um. Has anybody tried uploading this to like X Video or X Hamster under the title "Obese Man Masturbates in Shower" and just just see how many views it gets? That hurts a lot, but yeah, you just rub this all over your body, you wash it. What can I say? It works. <laughs> he looks like Christian, kind of, doesn't he? <laughs> Look at this face. I want you to put yourself in Panda Lee's position and just imagine that she is woken up at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night by this obese man with an erection. And this is the face that greets her. This is what's looking at her as she weeps silently to herself, thinking, did I really need to do this to sell soap? What has my life become? Oh, I wash my body. Oh, I wash my body. You watch me wash my body. So He's amazed by the shower mechanics involved. 
Yeah, I like how he's talking about taking a shower like this is the most revelation or revolutionary concept to him. Like, oh wow, all that nasty dead skin and the oil that gets on me, I can make it go away with some hot water and soap. <laughs> That's his. Like, even in the shower, he's trying to look at stream chat. Look at this shit. He's looking exactly. Those eyes are going down there. Like, hey, stream chat. How do I use shampoo? How do how do I put the conditioner on? Should I wash my ass crack and taint? Stream chat. Anybody want to help me? It actually feels pretty good. See? Raping my arm. Ow. 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 I'll wash my back. Oh, you'll love this. Yes. All the fags and women who've tuned in this long, you'll love this one. Look at the disgustingly hairy back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's like it's like a gorilla. It was partially lit on fire. That's how hairy he is. He's got, like, patches of skin, and then he's just covered in, like, thick Turkish hair all over his arms oh, and his yeah. back. Oh, yeah. Look at this Yeti. Are you fucking kidding me? It's like he's halfway through a werewolf transformation. Look at it. Look at it. There's a ring of hair. It's like it just it's like the demarcation line on his body. It won't go past this point. Like the hair on his body and the hair on his head are have they're engaged in warfare right now. And his neck and his fat face are the demarcation zone. That is amazing. Oops. Is, do you see that? It looks like he's got like a, a growth on his, uh, does he have herpes? <laughs> Everything about this video is wrong. But it looks like he's got herpes. It kind of looks like he's getting over a case of, a case of simplex too. So what do I think of the axe detailer? Groovy! What do I think of the axe detailer? <laughs> he looks like Joe Pesci! <laughs> this is, am I watching a mobster movie? If you were just to take his face right here, you could fucking put it on Pesci's body in any fucking movie he's been in. <laughs> it would fit perfectly. He's like a fat, hairy Joe Pesci. <laughs> oh, wow. This video is fantastic. Thank you, chat. This is, uh, you, you picked a fantastic video to watch. This is, uh, this is some award-winning shit right here. Are there any more? Are there any more videos of him uh, getting naked and jacking off in the shower? Or just doing retarded shit? Because I'll watch those. I'll put those up. You, you can enjoy those with a functioning chat. DSP tries it. That's remarkable. What is this? DSP tries it. Guilt trip my fans. I'm trying to be successful with my YouTube channel. As you know, this is livelihood. It's a bad economic climate. It doesn't work out. I honestly don't know what on earth I'm going to do at, for a job. And there's no one hiring in any job sector of anything we had training in. And there's no one hiring in any job sector of anything we had training in. And I was faced with a decision. Do I completely dump my hobby and try to focus on maybe getting a job in a completely different job sector because unfortunately there's just no one hiring in Connecticut where I live for the job that I was holding. Um, would basically try to repair the disc and or fuse. Okay, I'm just reading through the chat right now. Uh, people are saying cooking with the king videos. Oh, uh, let's see. I want to find that tuna one. 
where he's making a sandwich, but I don't think I'm... Oh, here we go. Oh, boy. Cooking with the king. Poorly cooking with the king. Uh, why? Not available. Oh, this is... Did he fucking remove them? Oh, not... Uh... Uh, well, I'll try his source video then. See if I can find that. They're all showing the same video, but I can't access it. Oh, let's try this one. The following has been paid for by the Kojima World Order. What's up, everyone? It's DSP, and this is an unprecedented moment. Where's Chef Ramsay when you need him? I'm actually doing something that some people have asked for, probably just joking around, but I find myself doing it. I am starving, so I got everything going here. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to whip up a couple of express mode um, bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches. Oh. Which include six pieces of white bread, uh, bacon, obviously. This is hardwood smoked bacon. Um, eggs, these are jumbo size white eggs. Uh, two frying pans, I have them both on the stove right now at just above medium strength temperature. Uh, somebody's saying salad video? Did he do a salad video? I can try to find that. Uh... Let me try... <laughs> uh, yeah, there are a lot of these. He hasn't taken these down. People in chat saying that it's his fans doing it. Uh, all right, you know what? I'm going to stick with this one for now. We're, we're going to go back to this. Talking one this jumbo one. egg, uh, a couple slices of bacon per sandwich, obviously two pieces of bread, duh, and, uh, you know, American cheese, which I've also prepared. First thing you want to do, either butter your pans or spray them down. I don't have time to melt fucking butter. I'm in a hurry. I'm a gamer. So I spray my pans with this. Did he actually just say, I don't have time to melt the butter because I'm a gamer? <laughs> I told Earlier on, I told you, if he doesn't get instant satisfaction, he's upset. It's bad to him. He's, he, he's so lazy. He's such a lazy fuck. He can't take the time to melt butter. The easiest thing on earth to do is to melt butter. All you have, you just set it in the pan. There's nothing else involved. Set it in the pan, turn the heat on. He can't even do that. That's fantastic. Pam, I use the natural shit, the organic canola oil. You can use the other stuff. Doesn't really matter. But, all right, spray that shit. Get the cap back on. Get that shit out of the way. Fuck me! Um, first thing you want to do when you're multitasking, as your pans are heating up, all right, cool. The toaster's plugged in. Let's get these bread toasting. Blah, blah. Let's get that to toast. It's toasting. All right, um, you got to wait for it to, you don't want to throw stuff on a cold pan. You want to wait for it to be at least warm, lukewarm. Um, I'm warming it up right now. This is starting to feel pretty good, but honestly, the other day I fried some bacon. I threw it on there too early, and it took a long-ass time. Is he, is he's making bacon and eggs. That's what we're watching, which is probably the easiest thing on earth to cook. You must have some form of quality control inside your brain as a cook. The tools of the trade. You need these guys, tongs, to be flipping your bacon. You need to be grab it from the end and flip it over when it's ready. Obviously, you need a spatula to be able to flip your eggs. Duh. Um, don't be an asshole. Don't try to flip your eggs with things that aren't a spatula, like a spoon. I've seen people try it with a fork. It doesn't work. And you haven't got a fucking clue. Um, all right. So it's starting to warm up now. I think we're going to put the bacon down. Obviously, depending on what kind of bacon you have, different cooking times apply. This looks like a particularly fatty batch of bacon, which I'm kind of pissed off about because I didn't know that. Ready? Hey, congratulations. Um, oh, my God. The bacon's not even coming apart. Ugh. Ugh. That is really fatty bacon. Holy shit. Not too happy about that. Actually, because I just had a batch of center cut bacon. Uh, center cut almost has no fat on it whatsoever. And uh, this is the complete opposite. This is super fatty bacon right now. 
This is, is this real? Like, th this isn't a, like a joke video. This is Phil actually doing these things. I'm making three sandwiches, which means I probably want two to three pieces of bacon per sandwich. Being that this bacon is gigantic, I'll probably only try to do two pieces of bacon per sandwich. So. Two. Now I'm really pissed because two pieces of bacon just stuck together, and that's like the death wish. Because you can never get two pieces of bacon to separate with one fucking hand. Oh, fuck. Fuck's sake! Oh, come on! First batch of bread is good. Pop in the next batch, toast it. Now the toughest part is cracking the egg. I'm joking on you. Because I suck at cracking eggs, I'm not going to lie. Oh my god! Uh, I'm going to put the camera... Uh, by the way, whoever did these videos uh, was perfect fucking choice choosing Ramsey. It fits in perfectly. Uh... <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, what is he doing exactly? He's making eggs and bacon and putting it on toast. Uh, why would you even need to make a video on that? Th there's no skill required in this. Put it down for a second and throw the eggs into the frying pan here because I'm going to make a fucking huge mess. You're useless, you know that. Here are my eggs, three eggs in the pan. I love runny eggs, I do. I love runny eggs. So when I cook eggs, I usually cook them. I move them out of the way of each other, first of all. I don't want them amalgamating into one big egg. There we go. Oh, my toast just popped. Which is fine. I'm going to let this fry. This egg got out of hand. <laughs> there we go. It's like watching a little kid in the kitchen when their parents aren't watching. You know what I mean? Like little Billy or Tiffany decided they wanted to cook to impress mom and dad. And they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> what is he doing? Yeah, you want to put them about roughly the same size. All right, my toast popped. Get that toast out of there. Last set of toast is now going in. Bam, bam. Toast. I have a really shitty toaster, by the way, so... If your toaster actually works, you probably won't have these problems. This is this is bullshit. These these can't be real videos. Are these real videos? How how do you how do you not <laughs> I'm having a bit of a brain freeze here. He's having difficulty operating a toaster. This is the life he lives where he, bugged toaster mechanics get in the way of him making fucking pure fat bacon sandwiches. <laughs> this is his life. It's remarkable he's not dead. My fucking toaster just does not want to work. Jesus Christ. It's looking like my third fucking sandwich. Oh, there we go. I finally got to stay down. Holy shit. All right, so our bacon is looking horrible. Pretty much because I had to pull it with one fucking hand. But what are you going to do? It is what it is. It's frying. It's cooking. It looks disgusting. It's all good. This bacon's almost ready to flip, but we'll leave it sit there for a second. These eggs, we are going to flip soon. They're almost ready to flip. See, they're solid now. See, this is how you know when to flip your eggs. When they're solid, the yolk is still bright yellow, but they look like there's no more liquid on the top. That's when you flip them. So I'm going to flip these now. Oh, come on. Fucking hell. Problem is I'm trying to do it with one fucking hand. There we go. That was a clean flip. That's how you do it. You're not good enough! If you're going to put cheese on your eggs, you got to put it on right away. As soon as you flip an egg, put the cheese on. So I'm getting the cheese ready here. It's stuck to my fucking hand, so that doesn't help. Throw that fucking cheese right on top. When are you going to fucking shut up? There's the cheese right there. All the bread is now done. I'm doing all this with one hand. So if I can cook these with one hand, you can fucking do it. I'd rather fuck off for a burger! I'm ripping the cheese with one hand. You're fucking useless. We're gonna have to start migrating the, uh... Start migrating the eggs over to the plate, which obviously is not big enough to hold three sandwiches. So I should have put two fucking plates down, but I'm not that smart. Where's your fucking brain? Alright. Egg number one. 
Bam. <laughs> I don't know what I'm watching at this point. I don't know. What is he cooking exactly? He's throwing fucking cheese onto his burnt eggs. He's got pure fat bacon going. <laughs> his plate's overloaded with too much bread. <laughs> Tell me he drops it on his foot. Tell me that's where this is going. Egg number two. Sounds like Mass Effect just finished, the Mass Effect DLC. Bam. Hopefully those are still running. Egg number three, they're probably not, which is going to piss me off. Eggs are on the sandwiches that quickly. We're going to get the bacon the fuck out of the way here. Let's see. Look at this burnt-ass fucking bacon. Before you ever take bacon off the plate, you have to shake it. You have to get the excess grease off of it. You slap it down on the plate. You slam it around a little bit. You flip it. You do the same thing on the paper towel. You slam it around a little bit. Bam. Well, I sound like fucking Emerald. I'm an asshole. Yeah, you can fuck yourself. That's right. You talk with an accent and you say sound effects. And that's how you sell fucking cooking equipment. Um, all right. This piece is barely cooked because it must have been on the edge of the pan. So that's going to go right there in the middle. <coughs> I'm actually going to migrate these over here. So while those finish up, do not leave a pan on if there's nothing cooking. I'm turning that off right now. I turned it off. You can leave that pan on the stove, but don't leave fucking pans on cooking. Trust me. I've walked up two hours later to see, oh shit, my stove is still on. I'm an asshole. Stupid fucking fat mouth bitch. The bacon, as you can see, is going ape shit right now. That's because one side was cooked, the other side was cold because I hadn't had it on the, in an area where it could cook. And also, there's a shitload of grease in this pan right now. But it's like a fucking swimming pool. Do you see the amount of grease in the bacon pan? He's got a swimming pool of grease in there. I, you know, for a long time I thought I'd never see anybody worse at cooking than Masiokas, and I think Phil might actually do it. I think I think Phil might actually be in that same league. As you see, look, this bacon looks cooked now. It's pretty nasty looking. It's not exactly the prettiest bacon on the planet, but it'll do. Cooking my ass. Here's the thing: your food's done. Your food's cooked, right? These are the tips no one's gonna tell you. Oh dear. Bacon grease, what the fuck do you do with it? Well, there's several options. You can put it in a... I, I, he's going to drink it, isn't he? He's going to drink it as <laughs> as his fucking beverage with this meal. A jar, you can put it into another container. Whatever you do, if you're going to put it in a jar, it has to be put into a glass jar. Do not put it into plastic or styrofoam. I've seen idiots... Put this in the plastic and styrofoam, and it fucking melts right through, and you look like a moron. I can't believe just how inconsistent you are! The most common thing that people do, I'm going to be honest with you, they either pour it down their kitchen sink, which is a bad move because the kitchen sink clogs all the time, or the other thing that I see people do, which I'm going to do because unfortunately there's nothing else I could do with this, this is going to go down the pooper. I hope you're fucking joking. <laughs> Wait, he's flushing bacon grease down the toilet? This is Masiokas. This is a real... I can't fucking believe this. He's going to flush his bacon grease. So, yeah. This is going to go right down the shitter, which is going to be disgusting, but what can you do? Now it's turning into be a fucking big embarrassment! As long as you know that you're not doing this, you know, ten times a day, it's not going to clog up a pipe. Oh my god. He's actually doing it. He's actually fucking doing this. Safest thing to do with bacon grease. <laughs> He's really doing it. Oh yeah. Hot fucking potatoes. Oh yeah, look at that shit in my back, my uh, trash. Oh, that looks delightful, doesn't it? You fucking donkey! The other thing. A lot of people say, oh, I don't like frying because when I fry... Oh, I can't clean the pan. Well, that's because you're an idiot. You fucking donkey. Whenever you're done with grease like this, you immediately, immediately put something in the pan to separate the grease from the pan. So, immediately get that pan cooled down. Immediately, I'm not going to say cooled down, but I'm putting hot water in it, by the way. Don't put, do not ever put, like, super... Do you think he washes his dishes in the bathtub? Like he's pouring, he's pouring shit down the toilet. Phil, Phil is cleaning up the kitchen by pouring it down the toilet. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. He must wash shit in the bathtub. I bet he does. I bet the sink gets built up. 
and he washes his fucking dishes and cutlery in the bathtub. Ice cold water in a really super hot pan. Where I live, the, the, the climate is temperate, but if you live in like a cold or hot area, you might break the fucking pan. But anyway, fill the pan with water, get the soap in there right away. It separates the grease from the pan, so later on when you go to clean the pan, it's a lot easier. Um, I have a dishwasher, and unfortunately, it does not clean these pans very well. Uh, from experience, I can tell you that. Now, the biggest problem with my eggs, I can tell you right now, is because I was cooking with one hand, I wasn't able to multitask, and the cheese has burned on the edges. You're a great fucking talker, but you're a shit cook. So to finish the plate, obviously, this is a hot pan. I know it's fucking hot! The bacon, as soon as I'm done making the sandwiches, I'm going to put that in this freezer bag, and I'm going to get it into the freezer immediately. Um, but, to finish the sandwiches, just for, you know, cook's sake, we're going to put two pieces of bacon on each sandwich. The bacon is nice and crispy. You know, you can cook the bacon however you like. Fucking shut up! Oh, my fucking bread just hit the floor. God damn it. That's a cooking faux pas. You can't have bread on the goddamn floor. Oh my god, leave it, leave it, leave it! No, he doesn't. He actually put it back up there? With bacon anyway, raw bacon sometimes does not taste that good. It depends on what kind of bacon you're eating. So he's walking through the... He went into the bathroom barefoot. He's been going through the kitchen and the bathroom barefoot. Dragging all sorts of nasty shit with him. Dripping grease on the fucking kitchen floor. And then his bread flops down there, and he picks it up and he puts it on top of the sandwich he's going to eat. <laughs> Holy fucking hell. Um, Oi, Bozo, are you fucking stupid? Once you get a bacon, egg, and cheese like this, you want to flatten the sandwich. And that's pretty much it. Oh my god! Unbelievable! No, 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 no! No! The following announcement has been paid for by the Kojima World Order. That's fucking remarkable. That is, that is some remarkable shit. No wonder Pandali has to cook. I completely understand now. She doesn't feel safe letting him cook. Could you, he fucking flushed grease down the toilet because he didn't know what to do with it. And then he's got a dishwasher and he's like, I don't use that. Because uh, no wonder you don't use it, Phil. You couldn't even operate the fucking toaster. How the fuck are you going to, you know, work through the mysteries of the washing machine? Or the fucking dishwasher. That must be really complicated. That's got to be extra spooky for you. Holy hell. All right. Um, it's uh, It's been surreal. I'm going to go cook some food now because uh, uh, I'm done with this stream. I'm going to go cook some food properly. Uh, you know, as in not flushing shit down the toilet when I'm done with it and dropping things on the floor and just wandering about like a fucking retard, burning things and being inconsistent and insane at how I handle things in the kitchen. Uh, I hope you guys have a, a good weekend. And uh, <laughs> remember, uh, don't flush grease down the toilet. That is a terrible fucking idea. I don't know what he's thinking, but that is insane.